How do narcissists keep the lies straight? Part two. Part two because we ran out of time the first time. So if you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. Okay? Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna leave you with right now because I wanna dive right back into what we were talking about earlier today. Okay, we were talking about how do narcissists actually keep the lies straight. And we kind of covered really quickly how they lie constantly. You can't tell what's actually going on. We spend some time on the double life, how narcissists have a double life, a mask. And I spent a lot of time on compartmentalization, how it actually worked in my life, what it actually looked like, things like that. And how the double, the double life with a narcissist, that mask, they're in love with the mask. They're not in love with you, another person, themselves. They're only in love with the mask, that image that they're putting out there. Okay, so... If you haven't had a chance, check out the first part of this video. Here's the second part. Jumping in with, with the double life, with the compartmentalization, we get to the thought of, does the narcissist actually know? Do they know that they're lying? Do they know that they're doing this to this person, to this person, to the next person? Do they actually know? Well, one of the things I want you to consider is that the narcissist knows at least to the very, very least degree, they know because they're doing it not around everybody. They're doing it around certain people. They typically are giving you a story that they're not giving someone else. They're giving you a lie that they're not giving the affair partner. They're giving you a lie and not a lie that they're giving their workers or their boss or their family. And typically you see this difference of like, wait a second, they actually know that the lies are going on, but it's hidden below different levels of either sedation, of cowardice, of lack of accountability, lack of responsibility. And there's this type of like running piece of I have to be able to run from it because if I face it, then I have to deal with guilt and shame. Now, a lot of times people think narcissists don't deal with guilt and shame. They don't struggle with that. And, and they actually do. But it's hidden and it's really fast. It's typically really fast switched over into blaming you, into projecting something else onto you and getting to the place where they rage out so you ignore like the things they've actually done. So we're talking about this aspect that the narcissist knows. They know that the lies are not acceptable. They know that from a society standpoint. They know that from a relationship standpoint. They know that they're not acceptable. But you have to understand a, a society and morals matter less to a narcissist than their ego. What's going to make me feel good in the moment? What's going to get me what I want? What's going to get me what I desire? And the narcissist oftentimes is looking for whatever it might be to fix that void, to be able to get where they feel better about themselves, where they start to rationalize what they've done, where they start to believe the lies that they've placed upon themselves, that they are a good person while they're still out there hurting, abusing, lying, cheating, and stealing. Oftentimes when we see this, we'll see this aspect of a, a narcissist is unwilling to be honest. Now, I normally talk about this in the aspect of like, is a narcissist able of change? Because people are like, they can't change. There's nothing they can change. They can change if they're willing to embrace honesty. But the problem is, if you don't embrace honesty, there is no change possible for anyone. Not just for a narcissist, for a survivor, for a regular healthy person, whatever that looks like. And being able to say, hey, I can be honest with the shit that I've done. I can be honest with what's actually going on. I can be honest and build a framework of how I need to grow, heal, change, and develop. That's when a person can actually engage in healing. So the narcissist knows, but they're unwilling to be honest with you, with others. But more importantly, they're unwilling to be honest with themselves. So as a result, a narcissist lies. They sedate. They compartmentalize, they box it up and put it away. They rationalize, they justify their behavior to be able to get to the place where they feel better about themselves. Now you have to understand this piece of like rationalizing the lies. Sometimes this aspect happens where a narcissist rationalizes the lies not to hurt you, okay, bear with me for a second, not to hurt you, but because they're entitled to what they want. A lot of times people think like the narcissist is out to hurt me. Like I can't believe they did this on purpose to hurt me. Was it on purpose? Yes. Was it with the intention to hurt? Not always because sometimes it's not even about you. I don't say this to be mean. I don't say this to be rude. I don't say this to get you all frustrated, but I do say this to wake some people up because some people in a narcissistic relationship think that they matter. You do matter, but you don't matter to that other person because that other person does not care about your value or your worth or spending the time and effort to actually put into a good, healthy relationship. The problem is, is when you let that toxic person dictate 
your worth, dictate your value, dictate your self-esteem, then you're left wondering like, am I actually good enough? Well, that's not the question we should be asking. But a narcissist will try to rationalize the lies. They'll say, oh, this isn't to hurt you. And they'll do whatever they can to get entitled to be, get what they want. But they'll start to rationalize the lies in their mind of like, it's okay that I did this because they haven't given me what I wanted. They haven't done this. I'm a victim, whatever it may be. Okay. So let's talk a little bit like the impact. The impact on you oftentimes is massive. I mean, when you think about it, you've been with a person that you have professed your love, you have been with, you have engaged with, you have, you have had kids together, like grown together, like whatever it might be. Like there's been something that has happened together for a long period of time. Could have been just a month. It could have been 10 years. Some of that is honestly really relative when it comes to being with a narcissist. Sometimes you can be with a narcissist one week and it's equivalent to like one month. One month and it's equivalent to like one year. And so the compound effect of being in that toxic environment over and over and over again can leave you stuck and leave you trauma bonded. You get to the place where you're so hurt from the abuse, they're like, I don't know if I can actually trust anyone anymore. And you're left with this emotional, this psychological, this mental damage from being with that person. And you're wondering, can I actually heal? Is it possible? I want to tell you today that it is. In this moment, it might not feel like it. In this moment, it might not resonate with you that it is possible that you can get that healing, that you can continue to move forward. And I want you to consider that the lie that you're telling yourself that it's not possible is a lie that has been confabulated and put together from being with the narcissist, of them constantly beating you down and degrading you to making you think that you don't have that worth, that you're not able or capable of taking care of yourself, of living, of, of moving forward with the kids, of moving forward and providing and, and being a single parent, whatever it might be. So when we're talking about this, you need to understand, you need to start to see through the lies. How do we do that? How do we actually like match up of like, wait a second, what we're seeing is seeing is the actual lie. Sometimes this is where you start to see the narcissist like start to pull away. Sometimes they're like starting to detach. They're starting to get a little distant. Uh, maybe they're starting to disappear. They're starting to be unaccounted for. And whenever you bring something up, they're very like defensive. They're like deflecting everything that you bring up. And you're like, wait a second, like something's not, not going on here. So you have to be careful of like when you start to see that, question it and then see how the response is. If the response is just flipping it back around on you, gaslighting you of like, I can't believe you're so oversensitive about this. Like this is ridiculous. Like you're controlling every aspect of me. Like there, there'll be these signs, these things that will try to flip it back on you. So when you have logical concerns of like, where were you for the past four hours? Like you said you were going to be home. Like you're not home. Those things are logical and those things need to be understood. Like, hey, you need to question some of these things. If you're, if you're sensing toxicity, if you're sensing different lies, you need to start questioning different things and being like, does this actually make, make sense? Like what's actually going on, okay? Then you start to recognize the abuse that's actually happening. Now, a lot of times this means you're getting other perspectives, not just your own version of the story, your own version of what's going on, but you have maybe friends or family that you would view as being like healthy or as being like helpful, and you walk up to them and you're like, hey, this happened in the relationship. But they're just like, oh my gosh, like that's, that's not healthy. That's not good. Maybe you're doing that by getting involved with a therapist, like getting involved with a coach, like whatever it might be, being able to take your growth to the next level by saying like, hey, this is what's going on. Like, I don't know what's, what's right, what's wrong. Like, I'm confused. Like, seek out for help because that helps so much in people to get clarity of what's actually going on. When people do that, they're able to see a different perspective and they get to a place where they're not isolated anymore. That's part of the problem is with a narcissist, you get isolated and you can't get free because you also don't have any other peers in your life being like, hey, this is what's going on. And you also have to identify the actual demonstration. You see, a narcissist will lie to you and they'll say one thing, they'll say another thing and you have to be able to pull back and be like, wait a second, they're saying that they're changing. So let me put the word demonstrate in front of it. How does my narcissist demonstrate change? How are they demonstrating love? How are they demonstrating honesty? How are they demonstrating care? How does that look on a consistent basis? Like being able to put demonstrate before some of the words and some of the questions that you're asking can be extremely helpful. And then you have to work on developing your education your resilience, your strength in understanding what is actually going on to be able to find that clarity and to move forward into your healing, into the power of you, 
who you are, the direction that you want to go, the person that you want to be, the purpose that you have on this planet. Last but not least today, I want to be able to invite you into an intensive journey, a 45-day commitment of joining the Clarity Challenge. It's designed to help you heal in and out of a toxic relationship. It helps you walk through a systematic process to find you, to rewire your mindset, to break free of a trauma bond, and to move forward daily with daily assignments, to move forward with daily lessons, to a place where you actually know who you are, have clarity, and know the truth. The goal is to help people get to the truth. And that is not one singularity thing of believe this or do this or go no contact, whatever it might be. The goal is to help you understand the truth in the relationship and find the clarity from the confusion and the crazy making that you've been going through for so many months, for so many years, and to get you free from that abuse. It's a couple days left to be able to sign up. Please go on to claritychallenge.net claritychallenge.net to be able to sign up, to be able to start your journey with other survivors going through the same exact thing so you understand you're not crazy, you're not alone, you're not hopeless. Reach out for help.